This is Mrs. Appiah with Module 2, Lesson 14, Converting Rational Numbers to Decimals Using Long Division. Student Outcomes. Students understand that every rational number can be converted to a decimal. Students represent fractions as decimal numbers that either terminate in zeros or repeat. Students then also re represent repeating decimals using a bar over the shortest sequence of repeating digits. Students interpret world pro word problems and convert between fraction and decimal forms of rational numbers. The essential question, what is the form of writing a repeating decimal? Example 1, can all rational numbers be written as decimals? Using the division button on your calculator, explore various quotients of integers, 1 through 11. Record your fraction representations and their corresponding decimal representations in the space below. Pause the video while you get your calculator and when you write the decimal representation remember that it is numerator divided by denominator so our first fraction 1 half 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 pause the video and do the division when you get a number that repeats for right now just write the repeating decimals and then a few dots afterwards. Example 2, decimal representation of rational numbers. In the chart below, organize the fractions and their corresponding decimal representations listed in example 1 according to their type of decimal. On the left we'll have terminating decimals. On the right we'll have non-terminating decimals. Remember that terminating decimals are numbers where the digits after the decimal point come to an end. They have a finite number of digits. On the right, non-terminating. Non-terminating decimals are numbers where the digits after the decimal point do not end. So for example, we have 1 half is equivalent to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 terminates, so it goes in the terminating column and one-third is a repeating decimal, 0 0.333 dot dot dot. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to use a bar over the shortest sequence of repeating digits. In this case, just the number 3 is repeating, so we write 0 0.3, and we put a bar over the 3. Go ahead and categorize each of the decimals above. Pause the video, and when you're done, check your answers. Look carefully at the way the repeating decimals are written using a bar. Next, what do these fractions have in common in the terminating section? In the terminating section, the fractions each have a denominator that is a product of only the factors of 2 and or 5. So taking a look at the denominators, we have 2, 4, 5, 8, and 10. And all of those either have a factor of 2 or 5. And on the right side, in the non-terminating section, each of these denominators contain a factor other than 2 or 5. So uh, 3 is other than 2 or 5. 6 has 3, which is not 2 or 5. 9 has a factor of 3 and 9, which is not 2 or 5, and 11 has a factor of 11, which is not 2 or 5. In the terminating section, all of these have a factor of either 2 or 5. Only 2 or 5. Example 3. Convert rational numbers to decimals using long division. Use the long division algorithm to find the decimal value of negative 3 fourths. So negative 3 fourths is actually 3 divided by 4. 3 divided by 4. Now, if you look at the way I wrote that, that is not the correct way. 3 is the dividend, 4 is the divisor, and the 4 should be outside of the division house. The denominator is outside of the division house. So make sure that you put the or set the problem up correctly. So here we have 3 divided by 4. 
And I know that the answer is going to be negative because it is a negative fraction to begin with. 4 does not go into 3 evenly, so we add a decimal and a 0 and divide again. 4 goes into 3 0 times. 4 goes into 30 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract. Your remainder is 2. Add a decimal. Bring it down. Divide again. 4 goes into 20 5 times evenly. 5 times 4 is 20. Your remainder is 0. So negative 3 fourths is equivalent to negative 0 0.75. And if you think about that, that makes sense. 3 fourths which is 3 quarters, which is 75 cents. Exercise 1. Convert each rational number to its decimal form using long division. Remember that you have a numerator and a denominator and the numerator goes inside the division house and the denominator goes outside. One of the ways that I remember that is that the D is a tall letter and it will not fit inside the division house. Go ahead and pause the video and complete these exercises and then check your answer. Example 4, converting rational numbers to decimals using long division. Use long division to find the representation of one-third. So 1 is the numerator, 3 is the denominator, so we're dividing by 3. 3 goes into 1, 0 times. Add your decimal. 3 goes into 10, 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract. Subtract, get 1. Add a 0, bring it down and divide again. And 3 goes into 10, 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract, you have a remainder of 1. Add another 0, bring it down, divide again. Now you'll notice that you're getting a remainder of 1 each time. And when that happens, it is just going to keep repeating. 3 goes into 10, 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. When you keep getting the same remainder, you realize that you have a repeating decimal. And so we have one-third is equivalent to 0 0.3 repeating. Remember, when you're using a fraction or a bar to represent a repeating decimal, you do not need to have two threes and a bar. You just take the shortest sequence of repeating digits and use a bar over it. So we only use one three for that repeating decimal. Notice here that the remainders repeat, yielding the same dividend remainder in each step. This repeating remainder causes the numbers in the quotient to repeat as well. Because of this pattern, the decimal will go on forever, so we cannot write the exact quotient. Place a bar over the shortest sequence of repeating digits. In exercise 2, calculate the decimal values of the fraction using long division. Express your answer using bars over the shortest sequence of repeating digits. Pause the video and solve the first problem. And negative 4 ninths is equivalent to negative 0 0.4 repeating. For the next problem, negative 1 11th. Pause the video, solve the problem, and then check your answer. And we see that our answer is 0 0.9 repeating. In this problem, 11 goes into 1 0 times, 11 goes into 10 0 times, 11 goes into 100 9 times, and that gives us 99. 100 minus 99 is 1. Divide. 11 goes into 10 0 times. Add another 0. Divide again, and you get 9. 99, remainder of 1. 
So you'll notice that you get a remainder of 1, a remainder of 1, a remainder of 1. And that causes the number in the quotient to keep repeating as well. So here we have repeating sections of 0, 9. And so we use just the bar over the 0, 9. So go ahead and calculate the answer for 1 7 yourself. Well, let's do that one together. Uh, the numerator and the denominator. So which number would go inside the division house? 1. So we have 7 divided, 1 divided by 7. 7 goes into 1 0 times. Add a decimal. 7 goes into 10 once. 1 times 7. Subtract 3. Add another 0. 7 goes into 30 4 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract and 2. Add a 0. 7 goes into 20 twice. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract 6. Now at this point you might be thinking that maybe you made a mistake. But just keep going and see what happens. So 7, uh, let's see, we've got a 6. Add a 0, divide again. 7 goes into 60 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. Subtract, we have a 4. Add a 0. 7 goes into 40 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. Subtract, we have 50. 7 goes into 50 7 times. 7 times 7 is 49. Subtract, we have a 1. Add a 0. And 7 goes into 10 one time. 1 times 7 is 7. Subtract, and we've got a 3. So at this point, you may notice that we have a 1, and we had a 1 before. And here, we had a remainder of 1, and here, we started with 1. Here, we have a remainder of 3, and that was our remainder of 3 as well. So when your remainder starts repeating, you realize that you have a repeating decimal. And 7 goes into 30. 4 times, 4 times 7 is 28. Subtract. So you'll notice that we have a repeating band of digits here. Let's highlight that. And we have 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. And then it's going to start repeating, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. So 1 7th is equivalent to 0 0.14. Did you notice that that is a multiple of 7? 2, 8, 28 is a multiple of 7 as well, 5, 7. And then that whole bar, the bar goes over the whole section or the whole sequence of repeating digits. So go ahead and calculate the decimal for negative 5, 6 and remember to answer in a negative number. And then pause the video to check it. In this problem you'll notice that the re, you have a repeating remainder of 2 and so then you're going to have a repeater in the quotient as well. Notice that the 8 does not repeat, but the 3 does repeat. So when you write your answer, the bar only goes over the 3. It does not go over the 8. And again, make sure that you are paying attention to the negatives. Example 5. Fractions represent terminating or repeating decimals. How do we determine whether the decimal representation of a quotient of two integers with the divisor not equal to zero, will terminate or repeat. In case one, the long division algorithm terminates with a remainder of zero. And we saw that in one of our examples. In case two, the long division algorithm does not terminate with a remainder of zero. So here, we are going to consider one-seventh from exercise two. There is no zero remainder, so the algorithm continues. The remainders cannot be greater than or equal to the divisor of 7. So there are only six possible there are only six possible non-zero remainders because you're dividing by 7. 
This means that the re remainder must repeat within six steps. So if it is going to repeat, it must repeat within six steps. That will be a, a good thing to know when you're solving one of your problems in your independent practice. Example six, using rational number conversions in problem solving. Eric and four of his friends are taking a trip across Illinois. They, will, they decide to split the cost of tolls equally. The total cost of the tolls is $8. How much will each person have to pay? There are five people taking the trip, so you want to make sure that you're splitting the money between Eric and his four friends. That's five people. And we're going to split the toll of $8. So we have 8 divided by 5 people. And 5 goes into 8 once. And so we have 1.6 as an answer. So how much will each person have to pay? Well, 1.6 is the answer to the division problem, but interpret that in terms of money. And that would be $1.60. So the friends will be each responsible for $1.60 of tolls due. Just before leaving for the trip, two of Eric's friends have a family emergency and cannot go. What is each person's share of the $8 now? So we've got the $8 of tolls, and we're going to split it between um, Eric and just two of the friends. So now three people are going on the trip. So 3 goes into 8 twice, subtract, a small, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18, 2, ah, so we have 2.6 repeating, 2.6 repeating. Then the question is asking the how much is each person's share going to be? So then would you say it's $2.66 each? However, is $2.60, 66 cents times 3, $8. So $2.66 times 3 people, and that comes to a total of $7.98. So you are short 2 pennies. And that's because of the repeating decimal. So each person, you would want them to round up to $2.67 each so that you would have enough money for the tolls. In this lesson you have learned the real world requires that we represent rational numbers in different ways depending on the context of a situation. All rational numbers can be represented as either terminating decimals or repeating decimals using the long division algorithm. We represent repeating decimals by placing a bar over the shortest sequence of repeating digits.